It's important to keep infrastructure in working order, even if that infrastructure is completely insane and makes no sense due to the magics of science. We're taking a quick peek at Bridge Constructor Portal. Bridges, they're one of the world's most natural conundrums. How does someone transport something across a large gap without falling into it themselves? Well, they use a bridge, but building a bridge that won't collapse under its own weight can be a real problem. So much so that people find it enjoyable enough to make entire games focused around just building bridges. From Bridget Plus's train bridges to the minimal art design of Poly Bridge and the creatively titled Bridge Constructor, there is quite the audience for the architectural design of crossing large gaps. So much so that Bridge Constructor's developers, Clockstone Games, began thinking about just what all they could do with bridges and what could even be a bridge in the first place. They've gone back in time to the medieval time period and gotten fancy with different stunts, but now they've started thinking outside the box. They've started thinking with portals. Released as part of Valve Corporation's Orange Box Bundle in 2007, Portal was a first-person experimental puzzle game meant to be something small and different than Half-Life 2 and its two episodes, as well as the multiplayer shooter Team Fortress 2 that were all bundled with it. The game quickly gained its own following and was popular enough for an in-depth sequel in 2011, along with the game's characters and locations becoming video game icons for Valve. Portal has spawned its own smaller experimental titles, such as The Lab in 2016, along with fan-made projects and indie games heavily inspired by its mechanics and design. Being a puzzle game about experimentation and Clockstone already experimenting with all they can do with the idea of constructing a bridge, they decided to license the property from Valve and put together their own game using the Portal mechanics. Bridge Constructor Portal's reveal was a bit of a mixed bag, as people were originally excited to hear news of a new game in the Portal universe, but unhappy that it was a spin-off not developed by Valve themselves. Regardless, I'm going to focus on how the game holds up on its own rather than its connection to Valve's own universe. After all, you'd think Valve wouldn't hand out their properties to just anyone. They aren't Games Workshop with the Warhammer franchise. If they're going to let an outside developer work on their property, then it's probably for a good reason. Clockstone Games' attempt at merging the two different puzzle styles of Bridge Constructor and Portal together is to generally be commended and make for a rather unique experience within the genre. However, while the game fully embraces the themes of Portal's madhouse, that is, the Aperture Science Research Facility, it doesn't feel like it fully embraces the mechanics. When it comes to theming, Bridge Constructor Portal is on point. Graphically, the game takes Aperture's clean and generally monochrome design and transports it rather well to both the 2D and 2.5D dimensions. The game also does a decent job at capturing Portal's writing and humor. There is somewhat of a story to this bridge-building game. You the player, are an employee of Aperture Science, who's been reassigned to their vehicle testing division. Under the threat of being literally fired, you accept this new posting and attempt to prove yourself as an invaluable member of the company. Or else. That's pretty much it. It's not a lot to go with, but it's more than I figured the game would have and has that semi-dark humor Portal is known for. GLaDOS, the artificial intelligence in charge of Aperture Science in the Portal games, also makes an appearance throughout Bridge Constructor Portal, but more as her persona from the first Portal game than her bitter and vengeful version from Portal 2. Again, Clockstone does a pretty good job keeping GLaDOS's informational and slightly cheery persona full of an underlying and utter contempt for the player, and a complete lack of care for the safety of other employees. To proceed with the next test, please twirl your beanie propeller while balancing on one leg. For safety, turn a little more toward the security camera. <laughs>
Yes, just like that. She'll pop in here and there for a joke or to give some kind of instructions, but as the game progresses, her lines become few and far between. That's one of the things with Bridge Constructor Portal. It's a rather long game for what its mechanics are. There are a total of 60 levels spread through six different chapters of escalating difficulty, all revolving around the construction of bridges. How players go about building these bridges is rather similar to the other games in the series. Scattered around a level are anchor points that are built into the solid walls of the facility. These anchor points are the most important locations within a level since they really determine where and how a bridge can be built and are the best way to make a solid structure, and that's where the real challenge is. Bridges aren't just going to support themselves, and it's up to you to construct something that won't buckle under its own weight. The Bridge Constructor games have always been rather open for how players can complete their levels, mostly following the path of whatever works, works. Unlike games in the series in the past, however, Bridge Constructor Portal removes a lot of limitations previous games made the players have to deal with, while limiting different things on its own. Instead of selecting a material to use from a list of building supplies, with each material having its own weight, cost, and overall usefulness, this time around there are only two things to build with. You've got either your basic support beam or suspension cables, and that's it. There's also a lack of a budget now as well. While before, players had to take material costs into account while building their structures in order to not go over a limited budget, Clockstone removed any kind of limited costs this time around. The game still keeps tabs on how much money everything in a level costs, and there's a little joke at the end of each level on how much you've wastefully spent, but there's no overall limit that you have to stay within. As long as whatever you're building fits within the level, you can build as large and complicated of a structure as you can imagine, or that your PC can handle. As levels got more complex and my structures became larger and larger, I began to notice the game chugging while zooming in and out while in build mode. The farther I zoomed out, the more of the level I could see, but the worse the frame rate got, which could make trying to follow what's going on a bit more difficult. Every material you use has a specific weight to it, and the game uses different shades of red to indicate stress points of a bridge's struts. That way players can figure out where they need to reinforce. Following the actions going on while a bridge is being tested, either just sitting on their own or having a vehicle cross it, is rather important and more difficult to do close up at a lower frame rate. Vehicles themselves have weight as well, so not only do your structures need to support themselves, but also anything going across them. While there are only a few anchor points within a level, you can kinda cheat things a bit by building on a level's geometry itself. The main thing you're trying to build these bridges over is poisonous water, which will not only destroy vehicles that fall into it, but also any kind of structures that touch it. Any solid bit of ground that exists within a level, however, is fair game for building a support on, even if you can't connect it to that via an anchor point. The main thing to keep in mind is that without an anchor point, things tend to move around a bit. Bridge Constructor Portal has an annoying little thing within it that I've come to call Da Bump. Da Bump is a simple concept. Even though structures look as though they are built out of solid materials, this isn't really the case. Struts bend when weight is applied to them, even if they don't fully break. While this needs to be taken into account when building a structure so that it will stay where you put it, it is also problematic when vehicles start to go across it. Being themed after Portal, the game incorporates many of the puzzle elements from that game. Portals, wade cubes, buttons, lasers, poisonous water, speedy and bouncy gel, and energy spheres all make an appearance throughout the game. If you've played any of the Portal games, then you may be familiar with how portals work, mostly with how momentum travels as an object goes from one portal to the next. Many puzzles use the idea of gaining momentum while entering one portal so that a vehicle can jump over something while exiting another, and that's a problem since it puts a lot of weight on part of a structure at one time with where the vehicle lands. 
The most egregious of these are the Aperture Science Aerial Faith Plates. These jump pads can quickly make things complicated and sometimes need to be avoided entirely. It's especially problematic when multiple vehicles are landing in the same spot over and over and over again. There are two ways to complete a level in Bridge Constructor Portal, either with a singular vehicle or with a convoy. Each level has a different number of vehicles that will make up its convoy and will spawn them one at a time within the level to send across your structures in hope of having all of them reach their destination. Due to how debump works and how it can cause stress on parts of a bridge that had previously worked fine for a single vehicle, it may take a bit of a rethink to complete this objective. You don't have to complete the convoy in order to unlock the next level in the game, but it can be rather satisfying to do so, especially when everything lines up to work the first time. Unlike the first-person version of Portal, this game doesn't actually give players any control over the portals themselves. Instead, they only get to build bridges, hence the bridge constructor part of the name. Portals work a bit differently as well, since there can be a ton of them in a level at a time, and they're color-coded. A vehicle entering a blue portal will exit from a second blue portal. Each one is paired, so there's no second-guessing on where something will end up, but I do feel that the lack of control over portals themselves really removes something from the game. I have to be honest here when I say that I found myself kinda bored with Bridge Constructor Portal. While the game introduces more puzzle elements over time throughout its 60 levels, each level I still found myself basically doing the exact same thing. When it comes to bridge architecture, the triangle is one, if not the strongest structure to create, and I found myself building a never-ending amount of the dang things. What do you do in this level? Well, you build triangles. How about this one? You build triangles. Oh, oh, what do you do in this one? You build flippin' triangles! There's very little variation on this, and only some levels let me build a straight line that I could just hang from the ceiling. Any strut can be turned into a roadway, and roadways will support themselves on solid ground, but only kinda. They sorta clip through level geometry, which can make vehicles do weird things when they get to that area, so that your best bet is to make sure everything is secured, and the way to do that is with triangles. This isn't a bad thing necessarily, since it does help teach people about architecture and the game does have an index called the Library of Best Practices to help give players an idea of how they should construct their bridges. But throughout my time with the game, I found myself doing the exact same thing almost the exact same way from level 1 to whenever I got tired of the game 14 hours later. After a few chapters, I almost completely gave up on completing Convoy since I was so tired of the game's mechanics, and that's just really not what you want from a puzzle game. Portal and Portal 2 themselves are rather repetitive mechanically, but they are both shorter games, and not only expand on the parameters of their puzzle design throughout the game, but also change environments to help keep players interested between levels, and have a very interesting story that is rather well written. Bridge Constructor Portal just doesn't have any of that. It's almost completely mechanically focused. Overall, while Bridge Constructor Portal is a well-made game, I'm not sure how much people would really enjoy it. If you're a fan of the Bridge Constructor series or bridge-building games, then this is a nice expansion on that idea. But if you're only a fan of Portal or know nothing about either series, you may find yourself rather disappointed. The game hits its mark on both graphics and design as well as musically with some nice calm tunes playing in the background of working on structures, but it's just too dang long! I really feel like the game could have cut itself down to 30 levels or so and introduced new mechanics more often instead of how long it drug things out and I don't really see myself playing much more of it. Bridge Instructor Portal is available on Steam for $9.99 US, and there's a lot of content there for the price. It just really depends on how much you enjoy building bridges, and if you think you can get through 60 levels of doing it over and over and over again. 
Thanks for watching. Please let me know what you think about the game or this video in the comment section. I'm Omega Pie Man, and I'll talk to you guys later. Want to see more quick peeks? Click on the video on the left for Day of Infamy, a rather realistic multiplayer World War II first-person shooter. Or click on the video on the right for CS2D, a top-down remake of Counter-Strike.